From the moment we have settled on this earth, we humans began to explore the world and travel around the seven continents. As the time passed, we began to innovate new ways to discover more lands in short periods of time. Bridges were one of the very first innovations we made to help us during our adventure. A bridge is a structure designed to cover a physical barrier without closing the way underneath, such as a body of water, valley, or a road. In order to provide the passage over the, the obstacle, it is built normally above anything that is otherwise difficult or impossible to cross. There are several different designs that, are, that each have a specific purpose and are appropriate to various circumstances. Bridge designs differ depending on the bridge's purpose, the nature of the terrain where the bridge is hidden. This is the background story of our bridge. We decided that our bridge is perfectly suited to be built over the Suez Canal. Its high supports make the bridge's height from the water surface very high. Therefore, it allows freighters with a height of 68 meters to pass below the bridge. Moreover, the bridge will connect Ismailia to the Sinai Peninsula and the tourist places there. The bridge will be of great benefit to private cars that will be able to use the bridge instead of ferries. Also, it is much cheaper to implement than uh, building an underground tunnel. First, we began the construction of the wood part of the bridge. We decided to connect the sticks together by putting a few of them close to each other and gluing one stick to them adjacently to connect all of them. Then, we repeated the pattern for one meter as shown in the pictures below. We also decided to make the, the road double layered since we found out that a single layer was too weak and bent easily. So, we created another layer and glued it to the first layer. First of all, we used four popsicle sticks to form a square to use it as the, base of the, uh, as the base of the support. Secondly, we glued seven sticks parallel to the vertical sticks of the square base. Then, we glued another seven sticks perpendicular to the horizontal sticks of the square base so it looked like a net or a web to provide it with strength. Then, we glued another two sticks to close the network or net of sticks. Then, we repeated steps one to four until we had a two supports of height 10 centimeters. We tried to minimize the weight of the supports as much as we could and increase the ability of the support to hold as much weight as possible to increase the efficiency of the bridge and the supports. Our objective to maintain a powerful and durable support was successful, as it was able to hold one of our team members' weight without breaking, considering his weight to be 80 kilograms. Each support used about four packs of pop popsicle sticks to be built, and each pack contained 50 sticks, which means that one support needed 206 to be built and a total of 406 to build the two supports to meet the requirements and rules of the competition. We tried to minimize the weight of the supports as much as we could and increase the ability of the support to hold as much weight as possible to increase the efficiency of the bridge and the supports. Our objective to maintain a powerful and durable support was successful, as it was able to hold one of our team members' weight without breaking, considering his weight to be 80 kilograms. Each support used about four packs of pop popsicle sticks to be built, and each pack contained 50 sticks, which means that one support needed 206 to be built and a total of 406 to build the two supports to meet the requirements and rules of the competition. During the process of choosing the truss type, we had to consult experts in the field to achieve the most efficient load distribution along the whole length of the bridge. We consulted Dr. Hatim Hassan, head of STE in Cairo University Faculty of Civil Engineering, and Dr. Mustafa Abdin, head of freshman and the mechanics department. After the consultation from both professors, we came down to two truss types, Baltimore truss or Warren truss with verticals. So we consulted students from the previous semester who told us that Baltimore truss was more complex and would have been harder to implement. So we settled with the Warren truss with verticals while applying a few minor mod modifications to achieve the best strength to it. There were a set of challenges that we faced during the process of construction. First, we had to achieve the best strength to weight ratio, which restricted us in many aspects during the implementation of the truss and the rest of the bridge. We had to consult experts in the field to achieve the most efficient truss design. Secondly, we had to organize meetings to work on the project during the tough times we are facing during the pandemic while one of our team members' father was sick with the virus. In addition, we had to meet the dimensions required by the competition rules while having the best design and load transfer mechanism. 
Finally, problem solving is a part of an engineer. The ideal engineer is a composite. He is not a scientist, he is not a mathematician, he is not a sociologist or a writer, but he may use the knowledge and techniques of any or all of these disciplines in solving engineering problems. We learned a great deal of lessons from this project. We learned that before beginning any engineering project, we need to do good planning and research. We also need to find out the problems that we expect to encounter and brainstorm possible solu solutions to solve them. We also learned that we needed to have good time management skills and manage our time between the different phases of the bridge in order to be efficient and meet the deadline. The project opened our minds to what engineering is since the project closely resembles real-world engineering projects and its stages. We realized that engineering does not only depend on theory and solving equations, but it also depends on teamwork and coordination between teammates. We also developed our problem-solving skills since we constantly encountered problems when constructing the bridge and had to think of innovative ways to solve them. We also used our mechanics knowledge to decide which truss design is the best at withstanding the weight. All in all, we realized that engineering requires a broad range of skills that every engineer must have in order to succeed.